In one of Ali Abdal's latest YouTube videos, he talked about his honest advice to someone who was trying to reach financial freedom. And while I agree with a lot of the points that Ali Abdal makes, there were a few big things that I disagreed with him about. So if you're trying to reach financial freedom yourself, I really hope you'll watch this video to the end because there's an even faster approach to reaching financial freedom that Ali Abdal didn't even mention. But to be super clear, I am not hating on Ali Abdal or trying to cause drama or anything like that. I'm just trying to add my thoughts and help even more people reach financial freedom. And if you have no idea who I am, and let's be honest, you probably don't, my name is Charles, and I've been using this YouTube channel to document my own journey to financial freedom, which I'm hoping to reach sometime in my 20s. And instead of getting millions of YouTube subscribers and starting a successful business like Ali Abdal did, I'm trying to do that with just a nine to five. Although I wouldn't complain if I got millions of YouTube subscribers too. And there were really just two big points that I disagreed with Ali Abdal about, including how he defines financial freedom and then how he recommends reaching it. But before I get into those, I wanted to give you a super brief summary of Ali Abdal's video, just in case you hadn't seen it yet, and also call out a few points that I think are really important. In this video, Ali talks about a conversation that he had with a school teacher named John. And John tells Ali that he wants to reach financial freedom. And what that really meant to John was having $1 million, ideally in the next eight years, which as a school teacher, John was not on track to reach. When Ali asked John how he was going to reach financial freedom, it became really clear that John didn't have a great idea. So John had the same problem that probably 90% of people do. He had this huge goal that he wanted to achieve, but he didn't really have a good plan to achieve it, which means that something has to change. So at this point, Ali asked John whether he wants to change his goal of reaching financial freedom or change his actions so that he'll actually reach financial freedom. And after thinking about it, John tells Ali that he really does want to reach financial freedom. So for the remainder of the video, Ali mostly talks about the books he recommends reading and the podcast episodes he recommends listening to to learn how to become an entrepreneur and to make an incredible amount of money, hopefully $1 million in the next eight years. Ali also talks about a few lifestyle changes to make, like listening to business audiobooks and podcasts rather than listening to music and watching TV and other stuff like that. So before I get into the things that I think Ali Abdal got wrong and how you could reach financial freedom even faster with less work, I did wanna call out a couple of big points that I think are really important. Because again, Ali Abdal does make a lot of great points in this video, and I don't wanna be all negative. The first point is that if you're thinking about pursuing financial freedom, you really need to think about what it is that you truly want that you think financial freedom will buy. This is literally the very first question I ask people who I'm coaching, because just reaching financial freedom is not actually a good goal by itself. What I mean by that is financial freedom is a means to an end. Having financial freedom can enable a lot of cool things, but just being financially free for financially free sake really isn't that important. And Ali Abdal shares his own reasoning for pursuing financial freedom, which was to work three days a week as a doctor rather than six days a week as a doctor. And the reason I'm pursuing financial freedom is so I can always do the work that inspires me, whether that pays well or not. But you might have a completely different reason for wanting to reach financial freedom, which is totally fine. What's important is that you have a reason why you want to be financially free. And what you might realize is that you don't need to be financially free to live your dream life. Ali Abdal sort of hints at this in his video, but I wanted to really emphasize this point. And Ali Abdal's own goals are actually a great example of this. Again, Ali Abdal wanted to reach financial freedom so he could work part-time as a doctor rather than full-time. But if you know you're going to be working part-time, you don't have to wait until complete financial independence. Since you know you'll have some income coming in, you can live that lifestyle before becoming completely financially free. And that's why it's so important to have thought about why you want to be financially free. Because if you just want a little more free time or a little more time with friends and family or a little more meaningful work, you can take steps to build that lifestyle right now rather than waiting until financial independence. Your life won't magically change once you reach financial freedom. So if you don't enjoy your day-to-day -day life right now, think about all of the different paths that you could take to improve your lifestyle. There are actually very few things that you can only do once you're completely financially free. So you might be able to live your dream lifestyle without having to wait until financial freedom. And to achieve your goal, Ali Abdal talks about the GPS approach, 
which stands for goal plan system. And while I like this approach, it's not really the important takeaway. So let me explain how this approach works, and then I'll explain what really matters. We already talked about why it's so important to have a goal, especially if you're trying to reach financial freedom. So let's just say for whatever reason, you need $1 million in savings to achieve your goal. That might be a great goal, but to achieve that goal, you have to have a plan to get there. Your plan is the actions you will take to take you from where you are now, which is less than a million dollars, to your goal, which is a million dollars. And if you have a good plan that's going to take you to your goal, then you need a system to make sure that you execute the plan correctly. Basically, a system helps keep you on track. But what a lot of people realize is they don't have a plan at all, or at least not a very good one. I see this all of the time with my own coaching clients, and I'm sure Ollie does too. So this is the really important part. If your actions, which is your plan, are not going to take you to your goal, then you have to make a change. And you can either change your actions to achieve your goal, or you can change your goal. This might be the most important point that Ali Abdal makes in his video, because I've met so many people that have these huge goals and aspirations, like becoming professional athletes or becoming rich or whatever it is, but they have no plan to realistically achieve that. And the sooner you recognize this, the better. Because if your goal is really important to you, you want to adjust your actions as soon as possible just to make sure you'll actually go achieve that huge big goal that's really important to you. But if you like what you're currently doing, then you can also just adjust your goal, which is totally fine. You don't wanna spend your entire life pursuing something just to find out that it's not that meaningful to you. And while Ali doesn't talk about this in his video, you can adjust both your plan and your goal to find a happy medium. So to summarize the important points, one, you should have a goal. Two, you should consider whether financial freedom is really necessary to achieving your goal. And three, you should use the goal plan system approach to achieve your goal or adjust as necessary. But now that I've covered the big points that I agree with Ali Abdal about, I did wanna talk about the two big points that I disagreed with Ali about. And to show you why these points are so important, I'll show you how you could reach financial freedom 10 years faster without doing any of the hard work or taking any of the risk that Ali Abdal recommends. My first big issue is with how Ali Abdal defines financial freedom. In the very first minute of his video, he says that financial freedom is just a psychological and social construct. I think that sounds a little complex, but later in the video, Ali Abdal says the exact same thing, but in simpler words. Financial freedom is a feeling rather than a reality. I don't think that this is true at all. Financial freedom is not just a feeling. It can actually be estimated quite accurately, and I'll show you how. Financial freedom is just the amount of money you need to continue living your life without earning more money. And it turns out that you can calculate exactly how much money you need to be financially free as long as you know just two pieces of information. First, you have to know how much money you want to spend per year. And second, you have to know your return on investment. Let me break this down. Money makes money as long as you invest. And there are a lot of different ways that you could invest, but I'll just talk about stock market investing just to keep things simple. Over time, the value of your investments will go up, so you can sell those investments to cover your living expenses. If your investments go up by enough, then you don't need any other sources of income. You would be financially free. The only issue with this approach is that it's pretty hard to see the future, but at least historically, the stock market has returned about six to 7% per year. Because of how unpredictable the stock market is, it's smart to withdraw a little less than that. And that's why the rule of thumb is that you can safely withdraw 4% of your investment portfolio every year without worrying about running out of money in retirement. So financial freedom doesn't have to be a feeling. You can actually calculate it. All you have to do is take the amount of money you wanna spend per year and divide it by 4% which is 0.04. So if you wanna spend $60,000 per year, then you would need about $1.5 million to be financially free. So I was really surprised that Ali Abdal didn't talk about this in his video. Sure, it's important to feel financially secure, but it's just as important, or maybe more important, to know what it actually takes to be financially free. But now that you know what it takes to be financially free, we have to talk about how to get there. And this is the second point that I totally disagreed with Ali Abdal's advice. And it's not that Ali Abdal's advice is necessarily wrong. It's just that there's an easier, faster, 
and less whiskey approach that Ali Abdal didn't even talk about. Because throughout this entire video, Ali Abdal just assumes that his friend John really does need $1 million to be financially free, and he needs it within eight years for whatever reason. So Ali spends most of his video talking about how John could take his $50,000 per year income as a school teacher to $200,000 as a successful entrepreneur. But becoming an entrepreneur isn't easy, and for every one Ali Abdal that succeeded, there are 10 who didn't. No matter what, it will take a lot of time, a lot of work, and at least some amount of risk. And that's why I've always recommended a completely different approach to reaching financial freedom. Remember that the person Ali was coaching, John, said they wanted $1 million in savings. Given the rule of thumb that I talked about earlier, you could withdraw about 4% of that, or $40,000 per year. Nothing crazy, but definitely enough to live on. Given that John was a school teacher, he probably wasn't making too much more than that but I'll assume he's saving $1,000 a month, which is probably reasonable. And if you were saving $1,000 a month, it would take 28 years to reach $1 million, at least assuming reasonable stock market returns. Remember that John wanted his financial freedom in eight years, not 28 years. So Ali Abdal recommended that he try to increase his income. But even if John doubled his savings from $1,000 a month to $2,000 a month, it would still take 20 years to save $1 million. To save $1 million in just eight years, John would have to save $7,900 per month, or almost $95,000 per year. And even that is assuming consistent 7% return on investment. In other words, you would have to make a lot of money, and John clearly had no idea how to do that. So consider this alternative. What if John didn't really need $1 million to be financially free? Remember that $1 million in savings means you can spend about $40,000 per year. But what if you could spend even less than that? If you only needed $35,000 per year, you'd only need to save $875,000 to be financially free instead of $1 million. If you could get by on $30,000 per year, you'd only need $750,000. And if you only needed $20,000 per year, you would only need $500,000 to be financially free. Most people don't wanna live on $20,000 per year, but it is possible. And if you have a part-time job, that might be enough to make ends meet. And for the record, I am living on less than $20,000 per year, despite living in an extremely expensive area. So it is possible. And this is how it's possible to quit your job over a decade faster, even without increasing your income at all. Earlier, I assumed that John was spending $40,000 per year and saving $1,000 per month. So here are the two changes that I would recommend. First, I would tell John to look for ways to save 500 bucks per month. If he could do this, two things would happen. For one, he'd be saving $1,500 per month instead of $1,000 per month. And second, he'd only be spending $34,000 per year, which means he'd only need $850,000 to be financially free. The second change I would recommend is that instead of quitting his job completely, John continued to work a few hours per week. If he could make just $10,000 per year, then he would only need $600,000 to quit his job. And making an extra $10,000 is not that hard. You could just work a side hustle or substitute teaching or something like that. So by making these two changes, John would be saving $1,500 per month, he would only need $600,000 to quit his job, and he would be on track to hit his freedom number in less than 18 years, over a decade faster than his current plan. I know there is nothing sexy about this plan, but it works. John could quit his job in less than 20 years, even without increasing his income, working long hours, or taking any risk. And that's still extremely fast, and he wouldn't have to count on becoming a successful entrepreneur to do it. That's why I think it's so much more powerful to just try to reduce your expenses rather than trying to become insanely wealthy. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't take Ali Abdal's advice too. If John could save an extra $1,000 a month on top of the plan I just talked about, he could quit his job in just 13 years, another five years faster. So again, there is a lot of value in Ali Abdal's advice, and shout out to him for making his video. I was just surprised that he didn't talk about this strategy, which could cut decades off of your journey to financial freedom, even without doing any of the hard work or taking any of the risk that Ali recommended. Spending less money isn't as cool or flashy as becoming a business owner, but it works, and it makes financial freedom possible for regular people, including school teachers like John. 
But this only works if you know how to reduce your expenses. And earlier, I recommended that John reduce his expenses by $500 a month. But how the heck do you do that? Well, I put together a video of 10 different ways that you could save an extra $1,000 per year, so that's probably a great place to start. I'll link that video right here.